In this unit, we started with a spring mass oscillator. Let's write the differential equation that can be used to find its position as a function of time. We would start with the F equals to MA. And when this box is oscillating, the net force acting on the box is the spring's force, negative kx. In this case, we must remember to use the negative sign over here. And so negative kx equals to ma. And then all we have to do is to replace the acceleration with the double derivative of the position. And here we have our differential equation. If we solve this differential equation, the general solution we would get for position as a function of time would either be a positive or a negative cosine or sine function. And what goes here is the amplitude. And what goes here is the omega t plus the phase constant phi, where the omega is the square root of k over m. For example, if a simple harmonic oscillator's position as a function of time is provided by this equation. See if you can find the amplitude, omega, period, frequency, and the velocity and acceleration as a function of time. This is the amplitude, so the amplitude is 3. And if everything here is in standard unit, then this will be 3 meters. This is omega t over here, so omega is 1 half. If this is in standard unit, then this will be radians per second. To find period, which is the time per event, it is 2 pi over omega. So it's just 2 pi divided by 1 half. And the frequency, of course, will be the number of events per unit time, which can be found in this case using the inverse of the period, which is omega over 2 pi. To find the velocity as a function of time, we take the time derivative of x. The negative 3 stays right there. When we take the derivative of sine, we get a cosine. And what goes here is exactly the same as uh, over there. So it's half t minus 5. And because of the chain rule, we have to remember to multiply by a omega on the side. So this is the omega 1 half. And then to find the acceleration as a function of time, we take one more derivative. So here we have negative 1 half times 3. The constant coefficient stays. When we take the derivative of cosine, we get negative sine. So we get negative, negative times negative gives us a positive. And then this is sine, exactly the same thing, half t minus 5. And because of the chain rule, we again, we have to remember to multiply by a omega on the side. So this will be 1 half squared right here. Of course, if it's on the test, you should simplify this. If we are asked to find the position at t equals to 7 seconds, then what we just have to do is to plug in t equals to 7 and carry out the calculation. Remember, if this is in standard unit, this is in radians. So when you carry out the calculation for the sine value, your calculator has to be in radian mode. Because when we took derivative, we had to multiply by an omega on the side. That means the v max would equal to omega times the amplitude. And this also means the maximum acceleration would be omega squared times the amplitude, or omega times the v max. Suppose an oscillator has a position versus time graph like this. Let's plot energy versus time graph and the energy versus position graph. Do this for the total mechanical energy E, kinetic energy, and potential energy. The total mechanical energy is going to be a constant. So the total mechanical energy is just going to be a horizontal line, 
and uh, a horizontal line. So the oscillator is only going to oscillate between negative amplitude and positive amplitude. So the graph is within this range only. The kinetic energy 1 half mv squared is 0 at the end point. The oscillator is at end point over here and there. So the kinetic energy will be 0 here. 0 at the end point, 0 at the end point. And the kinetic energy is a maximum at the equilibrium. So it's like this. The graph is uh, like this for the kinetic energy. Because the potential energy plus kinetic energy together is a constant, the total mechanical energy. So the potential energy is just the flip of the kinetic energy graph. So the potential energy graph is like this. It is a maximum at the end point, end point maximum potential energy. And the, the potential energy is zero at the equilibrium. Because kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared and the potential energy is 1 half kx squared, so they can only be 0 or a positive number. They cannot be negative. As for the energy versus position graph, it's easier to look at the potential energy because this is a function of x. Since this is 1 half kx squared, the potential energy is a parabola like this, just like a u. And then the kinetic energy would be the flip of the potential energy. So kinetic energy graph is like this. If we have to relate the amplitude and the, the maximum speed, we can use the, the maximum speed equals to omega times the amplitude. Or we can use the conservation of energy. The total mechanical energy, which is k plus u, should equal to a constant. At the end point, all of the mechanical energy is in potential energy, which is 1 half k amplitude squared. At the equilibrium, all of the energy will be in kinetic energy, which is 1 half m maximum speed squared. So if we write conservation of energy, we can also relate the amplitude with, to the maximum speed. Now, if we need to relate the x and the v, not at the end point, not at the equilibrium, at anywhere else. We would have both kinetic energy and potential energy at the same time. So this total mechanical energy would equal to 1 half mv squared plus 1 half kx squared. If the x and the v are not the maximum values, we cannot use this re equation to relate the two. We'll have to use the conservation of energy. Or if we know the position as a function of time, we can take derivative to find the velocity. To relate the amplitude to the maximum acceleration, we can say the maximum acceleration is omega squared times the amplitude. Or of course, it's omega times the maximum speed. We can also use the net force equals to ma. The net force is negative kx, which equals to m times a. And this works not just for the maximum values, but also for any x and a. Although we did all this using a horizontal spring mass system, it works also for a vertical spring mass system, like this. Or it can even be on an incline, Say you have a box with no friction and oscillates back and forth like this, or it can be on an incline with a spring like that and no friction. As if they all have the same spring constant k, same mass m, and we set them into oscillation with exactly the same amplitude all the boxes will go through exactly the same motion. With the, if they have the same amplitude, they would have the same maximum speed. So if we have a vertical model or a slanted model like this, it is easier for us to analyze their motion using the horizontal model. Because with the horizontal model, we do not have to worry about the mg or mgy.